Hey guys, coming in for the second part of the Flash Arrow crossover. Um, of course, this was Arrow's episode, Arrow Season 4, Episode 8, Legends of Yesterday, and I was definitely looking forward to um, the second part because the first part was just so great. It had everything I wanted the crossover to be. It had so many funny moments and, you know, it was really epic as well, and I was really hoping we were in for a really epic end to this crossover. I really thought this episode was going to be something great. And, uh, sorry I didn't get a chance to review it last night. I had a lot going on, just didn't get a chance to review it. Um, but, you know, now I'm going to review it. And, uh, I will say I did not think this episode was as strong as the first part. I still really liked it, but I just felt like it wasn't as strong. And definitely felt more like an Arrow episode with the Flash and company in it. Rather than an air, rather than a second part to a crossover, like you did have the crossover feel in here. This just to me felt more like an arrow episode, and I'll get into that. I overall really did love this episode. The stuff of this episode that's great is great, I will definitely say that. Um, but let's just get into this episode because once again, like the first part, there's a lot to talk about, there's a lot to cover, and uh, I want to talk about a lot of what we saw. Now, first thing I loved is that, um, again, like I said, something I thought they did very well with this is that, you know, the Flash mainly took place in Star City, while this took place in Central City. So at times, it's like you thought you are watching a Flash episode, and then you realize, oh yeah, this is Arrow. It was cool to see the Arrow characters in Central City. I like seeing that. Of course, you know, we saw Felicity, Diggle, and Oliver in Central City last year, but we really haven't seen them in Central City, um you know, as a group, um, you know, as a whole, the whole Arrow ensemble in the city ever, so it was really cool to see that here. I really did like the way this episode started, though, because we see a flashback to uh, ancient Egypt when um, Prince when Prince Khufu, you know, Carter and uh, and uh, Princess uh, Priestess Chiara, when, you know, Kendra and Carter were together in ancient Egypt, Prince Khufu is basically showing his father an offering for Horus, and Priestess Chiara is not impressed. She thinks that it will take much more to appease Horus and stop the Skyrocks, which continues to plague them. And Vandal Savage is also there with the staff of Horus, and again, very menacing. I thought he was a really great villain. Once away from the others, Khufu and Chiara talk about their argument, which was staged to hide the relationship, and that was smart of them. They kiss not knowing that Vandal Savage was spying on them, because as we know, Vandal Savage is in love with uh, Prince Priest this Chiara, that's why he didn't want her to be with Prince Khufu, um, and I really thought they did make this story a lot more interesting, I definitely like seeing that. Now, one thing I will say, though, and I do agree with everyone that said this, Kendra and Carter, I didn't really feel like have a lot of chemistry. I like the actor that's playing Carter, I really do, I think the actress that's playing Kendra is also very good. Just these two as a whole don't really have the best chemistry. And I do think it's going. It, it could be something where, oh, you know, this is just their first few episodes together. It's a bit rocky, but it'll get better. I do think it's going to get better. It's just, I don't really feel, I don't really, you know, want these two together because I don't really feel like they have the best of chemistry. I understand they need to be together, but, you know, I don't really feel like they have the best of chemistry right now. And I get that that's kind of the point. The fact that Kendra doesn't really want to be with him, I understand that. Um, but basically, she tells him that she still does not remember their past, and they arrive at their hiding place outside Central City, which is an old farmhouse, and that's where most of this episode takes place. So Laurel and Caitlin have joined them, but you wouldn't know because they honestly don't have a lot to do in this episode. That was my main thing with this episode. A lot of the characters in the first part, they really gave um, something for everyone to do in the first part. Not that they don't hear, but a lot of the characters really didn't have much to do. Um, for example, Caitlin. Caitlin had nothing to do in this episode. I forgot that she was there, okay? She joined the team like, oh yeah, Caitlin's still there. She had pretty much nothing to do, um, and I was a bit disappointed that I wanted to see more from her to do, and she really didn't do much. So... Barry and Cisco arrive last with equipment. Barry tells the gang about the energy field which keeps them from touching the staff of Horus, and Felicity, Cisco, and Caitlin go to work on a gauntlet to allow them to touch the staff. Diggle decides to check if Argus has any information on Vandal Savage, and Laurel and Thea decide to check police records to try and find him. Diggle as well had almost nothing to do. Um, very strange, but especially because this was an error episode, he almost had nothing to do. Now, Oliver, this entire episode is very distracting because obviously he just saw you know, his son that he did not think was alive is alive, um, and is with, you know, the girl that he was with all those years ago, and it's really shaking him, and Felicity follows him, seeing that he's distracted. Oliver promises to tell her what's going on, he just needs to, 
figured out first because he doesn't know what's going on. So Cisco walks with Kendra outside, and this is part of the reason why I don't think Carter and Kendra are the best chemistry, because Cisco and Kendra are so great together. Every scene they have, I just love. I think they did a great job. Also, I love the scene where Barry um, told Kendra to not let Oliver train her. That was great. I love that. So Cisco walks with Kendra outside. She wants to talk, but he's worried about distracting her and does not want to talk at all. And I love where he's talking about, you know, oh, whenever someone says you want to talk, that always means it's the end. And I thought that was very funny. But obviously, it's very awkward for him right now because, you know, this is supposed to be his girlfriend, but they can't be together because Carter's in the way and he knows that. And it's just very strange right now. And he really doesn't want to talk about it. So Carter joins them to train Kendra and sends Cisco away. And I liked how things between Carter and Kendra were strictly platonic in this episode. I will definitely say that. But again, I just didn't really feel like they had the best chemistry. I will agree with that. So he shows Kendra a trunk and tells her that they find it in every life. She opens it and sees her hawk girl outfits and mask, which that looked badass. I'd say both of those costumes look extremely badass. I loved it. He tells her that she'll remember in time that she is... <clears throat> a warrior priestess, and uh, I really love that scene, um, definitely, I mean, I like seeing Carter as a friend, I think these two really do work as a friend, I'm just saying, as lovers, I don't really think they're working yet, now I know, they're not lovers yet, I understand that, I, but, you know, for a guy who's supposed to be really in love with her, I don't really see it, I honestly don't really see it, I, I get that she doesn't really want to be with him, but he clearly really wants to be with her, and I don't really see it. So, I really wasn't sure if they were going to focus much on this whole Oliver situation with his child, because if you remember last year, they showed it at the end of the Flash episode, but didn't really show it after. But the thing is, this is a continuation. This was much different than last year. This wasn't a, you know, two different episodes. This was a continuation, and I really did like this, I have to say. My thing is here, did we really need all of this in this episode? I mean, it really felt a bit oversized, I have to say. He tracks down the boy and woman he slept with. She sees him, goes to talk to Oliver. Oliver straight out asks if the boy is his, since, you know, the age is right, and she insists that their baby was miscarried, and her son William is the son of someone she met a couple of months ago after moving to Central City. So, I was a bit surprised that his name wasn't, um... I I can't think of the name right now, but there's there's a there Arrow in the comics has a child that I guess takes over eventually, and it, people were thinking that was going to be him, but it's not him. So William calls to his mom from their car. She drops off his ball cap. Oliver picks it up and hands it her. She leaves to drive William to his game. Oliver looks at the single strand of hair he took from the cap, and Malcolm then calls. He has called a meeting between him, Green Arrow, the Flash, and Vandal Savage, and. I thought this was really great. I like seeing Oliver. You know, the thing I like about this is that you're really seeing the development for Oliver. You know, he's really changed. Back when he had this, you know, child, he didn't really care. That's why Moira didn't want him to go through this, because she knew that this girl, you know, Samantha, just deserved better. She knew that, which that was her name, Samantha. I like we found her name in this episode also, but uh, she knew that Samantha just deserved better and didn't want her to go through that with Oliver. But now that Oliver's a changed man, he's kind of regretting what he did. So, he knows there's something more going on here. As the Flash runs to me, he sees himself running at his side, as he did when he time-traveled the previous year, and he meets up when... I thought that was really cool that they reintroduced time travel here. He meets up with Green Arrow and Malcolm in a warehouse where they are quickly joined by Vandal Savage, and I love that scene where Vandal Savage is giving that speech, and Barry's like, did you rehearse that speech in a mirror? I mean, that, that was just great. Again, the comedy was really great here. There wasn't as much as the last episode. That was one of my things. I thought I felt like they could have done a bit more of it. There was some good humor in here, I will say that. I just felt like there was a lot more in the first one than there was here. Uh, Vandal Savage insists he needs Kendra and Carter's life forces to stay immortal, and Green Arrow shoots him with an arrow, which Vandal pulls out, apparently unhurt. He threatens to kill everyone Green Arrow and the Flash loves to destroy their cities unless he's given Kendra and Carter in 24 hours. So they have to give him, them in 24 hours, and that's what has to happen. So once Vandal leaves, Malcolm is horrified that they are not willing to give Vandal what he wants, and he threatens Oliver if anything happens to Thea, because obviously this is his daughter, he's not going to let anything happen to her, and that was really crazy. Um, so after being filled on Vandal's threats, Kendra's not willing to let others die first, storms outside, even though... You get, you know, even though, um, you know, everyone's trying to protect her, she doesn't want them to have to do that. She kind of wants to do things on her own. And I like seeing this 
independent side of Kendra. You know, she's realizing she's more aware of her powers. She's realizing what she's capable of. She kind of wants to fight Vandal on her own. And uh, Cisco and Carter argue about who is going to talk to her. Carter wins and follows her outside. I thought it was I thought it was pretty funny the interaction between Cisco and Carter because yeah, it is very strange here. So Barry then tells Cisco, and this was a very Flash esque scene. I definitely really like this. I'm just saying, other than Barry and Cisco, the other Flash characters really had nothing to do. I mean, Caitlin really had nothing to do. Just I wish they would have had more to do here. So Barry tells Cisco that he ghosted, and they worry about the possibility of Barry time traveling again, which Cisco think which Cisco thinks is just a really bad idea because they they already have too much on their hands, and uh, they shouldn't do this because he could change something and could end up really bad, and he doesn't want to change something because they know what happened last time, and uh, you don't really know if he's gonna time travel or not. I mean, you're pretty sure he is, but you don't really know. And I like this scene here. I thought it was really great stuff. Um, and I like how in this episode, Cisco was, you know, just as uh, much of a hero as Barry and Oliver. If you really think about it, Cisco has really been the main focus of this. I mean, yes, Kendra, but Cisco has been a big part of this, and I like that they still continue that here. So Kendra asks Carter if suicide is an option, if they kill themselves, and, you know, because if they kill themselves, he... Vandal can't steal their life forces, and I thought that was very smart of her to say that, and Carter encourages her to emerge instead so they can beat him. He really wants her to become fully aware of her powers, and he tells her they hit him, they spar with him, taking her down twice before she becomes enraged. I like seeing Carter as her trainer. I thought that was really great. Her wings come out, she pins Carter, he tells her that the key is her rage, and uh, I thought that was really great. You know, now we know how her wings are coming out. I like seeing that. So Felicity goes to them, they have news, and in the farmhouse, Laurel hands over a Betamax that she got from a group of conspiracy theorists who study Vandal Savage, and I love Thea's line where she's like, are you sure we can watch that? I thought that was pretty funny. So Felicity manages to get it to play. Now, how she did this, I don't know, but I guess they know how to work a Betamax. It is recording by a Dr. Boardman who theorizes that Vandal could destroy the world and that the only thing that might stop him is an object, any object which was present to the Calamity, which gave Vandal his immortality. Now, Carter does not remember a Calamity, but Kendra thinks that the Staff of Horus could work, and that's what they have to find. They have to find the Staff of Horus, they have to find where it is, and uh, that's basically how they defeat Vandal. So, in his lab at the police station, Barry gives Oliver the results of the DNA test he ran on the hair, and... What I like about this is even though this was an Arrow episode, this was much more of Barry helping Oliver than Oliver helping Barry. I mean, it really just shows how the dynamic has changed, and I like seeing that. Oliver lies saying that has to do with Dark, and uh, Barry knows that it's it's definitely more than that. He asks Barry not to tell Felicity, and as soon as Oliver leaves, Felicity shows up, and I knew this was going to happen. I was a bit worried, though, because you guys know I don't like raging Felicity. I don't like Felicity being angry all the time. Here, I think it made sense, though. I mean, this this is his girlfriend. He's hiding a secret from her. He's promised her that he won't lie to her, and he won't keep secrets from her, and she doesn't know what's going on, and one of the biggest parts of a relationship is trust, and she needs to trust him, and she wants to trust him, but if he's going to do stuff like this, how can she trust him? That I totally understood, and I thought they handled it very well here. So she demands to know what's going on. She sees Barry speed the paper into his pocket and insists on seeing it. And uh, I thought it was really great that he actually did show it to her. I thought he was going to hide it from her, but no, he does show it to her. One of Barry's weaknesses, I've said many times, is Felicity. He just, he'll do what she says. It's just, it's great. I love seeing that. So William plays with his Flash action figure on the front porch of his house. I thought that was great. His mother sits. She sees Oliver approaching and sends William inside and uh, basically... Samantha that admits that William is his son and tells Oliver about how Moira bribed her to make up the miscarriage story. And Oliver doesn't believe that his mother would do that. You know, he knows that she's done some pretty rational things, but nothing like that. So Samantha brings him inside, and not only did she never want to tell him, she never cashed the check. We find out that she never cashed this million dollar check that uh, Moira gave her. And she says she wanted to keep William away from Moira after that, and that Oliver's former Playboy attitude 
would have been bad for William, and I do agree with that. And Oliver's telling her that he's different now, and Samantha knows that he is, but also that Oliver's life is just chaotic. You know, he's now running for mayor. He's the arrow. There's so much going on with him. And Oliver begs for the chance to be in his son's life. Samantha insists that Oliver tells no one, not even his girlfriend, not if he wants to see William again, and... Basically, you know, even though Oliver wants to tell Felicity, he wants to see William. He wants to develop a relationship with his son, and obviously he wants to see him again. And in order for him to do that, he needs to not tell Felicity. So right away, Felicity waits for Oliver in the farmhouse. She gives him the chance to tell the truth, but he lies. She tells him that she knows he has a child and wants to know when he planned on telling her. And I like that this wasn't like, oh, you're cheating on me. That's what I thought this was going to be. I was really worried Felicity was going to get the wrong idea. Like, oh, you're cheating on me. There's another woman in your life. That's what I thought this was going to be. But no, she knows that there's a child. She knows that he ran a DNA test and that she didn't know about it. And I will say that Oliver never planned on telling her probably because he never thought it would come up. And he thought the child was gone. But... He should have told her, honestly. I understand that he wants a relation with his son, but this if he, if he really loved her, then he'd tell her. And she says that he doesn't know. Barry comes out the door in time to hear Felicity say she can't be with Oliver since he does not trust her. And uh, Oliver's pretending to be okay. He's pretending like this isn't bothering him and then goes inside with Barry to make their plans. And Oliver thinks that Kendra should be their secret weapon since Vandal does not know she has emerged. Oliver will be a distraction, and Barry will wear the gauntlet and grab the staff, and Oliver tells the rest of the team to stay behind, and uh, I thought that was really great. Um, I definitely like seeing that, this plan that they had out, you know, because Kendra did want to help them out, and I like seeing that. So the Flash and Green Arrow escort Hawkgirl and Hawkman in full gear with chain wrist to meet Vandal Savage. Now, they tell Thea and Laurel to not go with them, which I thought was interesting. I mean, they just got Laurel, and you're not having her go with you. I, I don't understand that. I mean, I understand this is about Hawkgirl and Hawkman, but you just tracked down Laurel. You don't want her to help you. I mean, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. And it was, again, this episode was not bad. It was just there were a lot of errors that I wasn't as big as a fan of. So, they escort Hawkgirl and Hawkman in full gear with chain wrists to meet Vandal Savage. Vandal calls Hawkgirl his love. She spits back that she will never be his love. Green Arrow begins to fight Vandal as the Flash releases Hawkgirl and Hawkman. Hawkgirl can't release her wings, however, and the fight quickly goes very badly. It's not going well at all. And... I like seeing them struggling there. I thought this was really great. Vandal stabs Hawkman and Hawkgirl, stealing their life forces. The Flash gets the staff, but the gauntlet isn't working. Vandal holds the energy from the staff at bay. Green Arrow tries to help him, but he is a lost cause. He yells for the Flash to escape. The Flash insists on staying, but there's a fantastic explosion. The Flash manages to speed ahead as Green Arrow is vaporized. Now, believe it or not, guys, there are only two action scenes in this entire episode. There aren't too many. The explosion spreads through Central City, killing everyone, including everyone at the farmhouse. And the Flash keeps running and goes again. And travels back in time to the meeting with Vandal 24 hours earlier, and I thought that was really great that that happened, um, because obviously they're not going to die. We know they're not going to die, but just seeing that they failed, I thought was really interesting, and I was a bit worried. I'm like, why is this feeling like the final fight? Oh, because Barry's going to travel back in time. That made sense. I thought it was very smart that they did that. So... Basically, Oliver can see that something is upsetting Barry, but it is only when they're back at the farmhouse and alone that Barry does explain what happened and that they can't go through with this plan because they failed against Vandal, but Barry insists that they can't mess with the timeline, but Oliver insists on knowing what went wrong so they can have a better outcome. And Barry says Oliver was the problem. He was distracted. His head was just not in it. And uh, Oliver demands that Barry tell him why. Barry admits Oliver has a son, and he and Felicity had a bad fight about it, and uh, I thought it was interesting that we saw that, that that fight between Felicity didn't actually happen. It appeared to be the end, but Barry made it so that fight did not happen there. So Oliver goes to talk to Cisco, who's working on the gauntlet. My only thing is we don't even see Felicity for the rest of this episode until a scene a little bit later. I'll get into that, but we barely see Felicity um, in this episode. I mean, after after the one scene with Felicity, we barely see her. So Oliver goes to talk to Cisco, who's working on the gauntlet. He wants Cisco to go talk to Kendra. Oliver recognizes Cisco loves her and thinks he can reach her because Carter just can't. She doesn't have those same feelings for Carter. Cisco clearly can get to her better, and I definitely agree with Barry saying that. 
So Cisco interrupts Carter and Kendra's trying to talk to her. Carter gives them space. I like that Carter understood. I thought he was going to be a dick about it, but no, he wasn't mean about it. He's like, okay, I understand. And Cisco thinks the key is for her to focus on being a priestess and not a warrior. You know, focus on the good in her. Focus on the good-hearted nature that she is. And uh, I definitely do agree. I mean, that really is what to focus on. And she admits that she has been lying to Carter. She is remembering. And I really like seeing that. I mean, we knew from the flashback, sort of. But now we know that she has been remembering. I thought it was very interesting that we found that out. And Cisco talks about how their power is calling them a gift. She can choose how she feels about them. Cisco asks Kendra to close her eyes, and she does. And we see another flashback. Now, this was very interesting. We see Priestess Chiara wakes up beside Prince Khufu. He asks her to stay, but she needs to communicate with Horus. Otherwise, there'll be more Skyrocks soon. Vandal Savage is saying their relations between royalty and clergy are forbidden. The relationship is punishable by death. Khufu tries to send Vandal away, but Vandal attacks and says he will have Priestess Chiara the same way Khufu did. Chiara stabs Vandal, but he survives long enough to stab both of them. And that was insane when we realized that he just killed him like that. But the Skyrocks actually meteors begin to fall... And uh, Vandal insists his, ha his hate and anger will live forever. And as they lay dying side by side, Chira prays to Horus to shroud them in their wings, in his wings. And uh, basically, I thought that was definitely very interesting. So Kendra then opens her eyes and tells Sisko that she knows what to do. She needs to pray to Horus. That's the way to get her wings to happen. Um, and I think it was definitely interesting that we saw that, just seeing this flashback here. So, in the farmhouse, Kendra talks about the memory. It is the calamity Dr. Borman spoke of. Carter's never been able to remember their first death, surprisingly. Probably because he died instantly and she didn't. Uh, Kendra saw a piece of meteor in the staff of Horus, and Cisco realized that the gauntlet will also need some pieces of meteor to work, and Barry speeds off to steal some from a museum. They make a similar plans to the last time, only now Oliver tells his team to suit up. So, I like seeing that they did decide to have, um, you know, Diggle, Thea, and Laura with them because they need them. You know, the bigger the army, the better it is to take down Vandal. And I understand it's like a whole bunch against one, but Vandal's very powerful. You know, he's been around for centuries, and they haven't. I mean, yes, um, Kendra and Carter have, but they're not as powerful as Vandal. They're just not. So... The Flash is still unsure about the changing the timeline, but it is time to confront Vandal again. It starts out exactly the same. This time, though, um, Green Arrow frees Hawkman and Hawkgirl from their chains, and her wings emerge, and that, plus Diggle, Black Canary, and Speedy, join the fight. Joining the fight helps greatly, and this time, the Flash gets the staff with no one dying. Once again, Vandal holds the staff's energy at bay for, for a time. Green Arrow helps the Flash with the staff. This time, though, Vandal Savage is reduced to a pile of dust, and, uh... They killed him. They successfully killed Vandal Savage. Thing is, though, he's supposed to be the big villain on Legends of Tomorrow. Now, how's this going to happen? We'll get into that. Uh, but at this point, I'm like, how are they going to get him on Legends of Tomorrow? Because we know that he's the main villain on that. We know that he's coming back. We've seen him in the promos. Um, but that was an awesome fight. I definitely really liked it. I will say, I did feel like we should have seen a bit more, like that one fight we had with them struggling. I honestly would have wanted to see more of them struggling. It could have been interesting to see that. Uh, but the fact they did kill him, I thought was really great. I definitely loved seeing that. And just the fact that we got this epic fight in the first place, I thought was awesome. So, outside Barry, Oliver, Cisco, Carter, and Kendra walk. They are not sure if Vandal's gone for good, which we know he's not, since they never beat him before. But they're ready to move on with their lives, and it sounds like they will do so together away from Central City, which you knew that they were going to go. You know that Carter and Kendra, they were going to leave after this episode because they're part of the cast and legend tomorrow. And, uh... Kendra and Cisco talk alone, and I thought this was a really great scene. You really see a maturity here in Cisco that I don't think we've really seen before. You know, he under he says he's not happy about them breaking up so she can be with Carter, but he knows it's right. He understands that she needs to be with him because, you know, it's just that's how it's gonna go. It's just it's that's how it needs to be. There's nothing that he can do about it. There's nothing that will change it. That's just how it's going to be. It has nothing to do with him. And I like that Cisco understood that here. I thought that was really great. So Cisco gives her a necklace made from the meter, which also has a GPS locator if she ever needs him. Kendra gives Cisco one last kiss, and they are going to meet again because they confirm that Cisco is going to be in Legend tomorrow, which is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see when these two are going to reconnect because I really love their chemistry. I'm honestly sad to see Kendra go. I'm surprised by how much I cared about her character. Character, but I really feel like we've gotten to know her very, very well. Carter, not as much. Definitely, this was more of Kendra's uh, crossover than anything. 
Carter, I feel like we don't know him as well, but we're definitely going to find out more about him in Legends of Tomorrow. But what I like about this is now everything's established. You know, that's something I was worried about the going in Legends of Tomorrow, that we'd have to meet characters we haven't met before. Rip Hunter is the only character we're going to meet that we haven't met before. So, going in Legends of Tomorrow, you know, everything's going to be established. We're going to know everyone. We're going to know what they're capable of, what their powers are. And that way, we want to see them form as a team. And I think it's really great the way they did that, because now we know all the characters. So I thought that was a really satisfying way to end the Kendra and Cisco storyline for now. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how they continue that. So Barry and Oliver talk about if Oliver is going to admit to having a son to Felicity. Barry does not want to disrupt time more than they already have, and Oliver's unsure what to do. Maybe William's better off without him, and Barry insists on a hug, and Oliver gives in. And I like that Oliver actually gave him that hug. You know, before he didn't, but they actually had the hug here. It just shows while Oliver's changing. I definitely like seeing that, and uh, I like, again, how Barry's talking about, you know, how things just keep changing. He doesn't want things to keep changing, but he just needs to accept it, and... I mean, all the scenes between these two were just great. It makes me wish that they'd have more scenes together on a daily basis, honestly. Anytime Oliver and Barry have a scene together, it's always great. And some of the strongest things, some of the strongest of both of these episodes were, was their bonding. It's just, it's great. They have such great natural chemistry, and I love it. So in Samantha's house, Oliver agrees to not tell anyone about William, even Felicity. Samantha allows him to go up and see William, pretending to be a friend of hers and nothing more, which... It's sad, but that's how it needs to be, because we know that if he was to tell, you know, William, he'd be a pretty fucked up kid. I mean, obviously, he'd be fucked up, and there's just a lot for him to process. And I do feel like maybe when William's older, eventually they will tell him, but right now is just not the time. You know, this kid's nine years old. He's not 13. He's not, you know, a teenager. He's only nine years old. So Oliver goes to William's room, which is full of flash, um... Uh, paraphernalia, I mean, just full of, he, this kid is clearly a huge fan of the Flash, and Oliver tells William that he knows the Flash, and William's excited and asks Oliver to play with him, handing Oliver a Captain Cold action figure. Oliver asks if it's okay for him to come by and say hi sometimes. William answers by attacking Oliver's Captain Cold figure with his Flash figure, and I feel like we're gonna see this again. I feel like we're gonna see this kid again. I like seeing the way they set this up. I do feel we spent a bit too much time on this in this episode, I definitely will say that, but it was worth it for that scene, I definitely really liked it, and then we get this really great scene between Felicity and Oliver, Felicity and Oliver return home, the apartment is still wrecked from Vandal's earlier attack, she reminds him that he promised to tell her what was upsetting him, whatever it is she needs to know so she can help him with it, and Oliver tells her that it does not matter, it's over, they hug, but Felicity looks very concerned. She knows that there's clearly something she that he's not telling her, and she wants to know what it is, and I heard this is gonna have, they're gonna have some problems in their relationship, definitely. This is definitely going to affect them in a way it hasn't before, and I'm interested in seeing what that's gonna be exactly, because we don't know exactly what is going to, um, what effect this is gonna have on them, but I really heard this is gonna have a negative effect come next episode, and uh, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see what happens there. By the way, no dark in this entire episode. I was surprised we did not have dark in this episode. Um, but I like thinking these two episodes as one big episode. I don't like to think of them as two separate episodes, because like I said, I really think it is one big episode. Then we get to the ending here, which was very interesting. I don't really know what's going on here. I think this has to do with Barry changing the time, but this is definitely very interesting. Malcolm finds the pile of dust that was once Vandal Savage, begins to collect it in a canister while repeating the words Vandal said when he became immortal. He looks into the canister, says that Vandal owes him, calling him old, calling him buddy, and that's how the episode ends. So clearly Malcolm knew Vandal as a friend, and we can't trust him. I mean, we knew, I we you know, this entire season has been like, can we get Malcolm's trust? Can we trust him? And just when we think we can, we can't, and I think it's a really great choice, and definitely interesting seeing how they do that. And I definitely feel like Malcolm is going to be a more essential part of Legend of Tomorrow than we think he is. And maybe that's why we're not seeing a lot of him on Arrow, because maybe he will be a bigger part of Legend of Tomorrow than we think he will be. Um, but overall, guys, great episode. I definitely will say that. Like I said, there just were a few things that was a bit disappointing about. We really got nothing with Laurel. I mean, think about it. There was really nothing for Laurel to do in this episode except be Black Canary and for them to track her down. It seemed like there was going to be more for her to do, and there really wasn't anything. I was a bit surprised that there was nothing. Caitlin was in this for was in this, but she had no dialogue. I don't think I don't really remember her saying anything that important. Um, I'm surprised that she wasn't in this as much. I was expecting Wells to be in here. He wasn't here. Um, but 
Caitlyn was, and they really gave her nothing to do. Also, Diggle really didn't have much to do here. It just seemed like a lot of the secondary characters didn't have as much to do here. And I understand that, yeah, they had a lot to do in the first part, and this is meant to be, like, one big episode. But come on, you give them all this great stuff to do in the first part, and now in the second part, I was a bit disappointed by that. But I will say this was an extremely satisfying episode. I thought it was really great overall. The scenes with Cisco, Kendra, and Carter, I just, I loved it. I loved all the scenes between Barry and Oliver. I thought that was really great. But let's talk about this whole situation with William. Obviously, Felicity's gonna find out. I mean, you know that she is interested you know that she wants to know what's going on, even though Oliver's telling her, you know, no, don't worry about it. She's going to worry about it. I mean, she's his girlfriend for crying out loud. She's going to care about, you know, what's going on. She wants to know the state of, you know, what, you know, what this could be that he's hiding from her. Clearly, there's something. And uh, we'll have to see what happens. That definitely is going to be interesting to see what happens in terms of um, Felicity and Oliver because... I don't want it to be the end for those two. I, I hope that they can solve this. I heard it's going to have some uh, serious repercussions, but I hope this is something that they can deal with. I really hope that works out well for them, but I'm not really sure. We'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, Kendra and Carter, like I said, they don't really have chemistry, and Cisco even said they don't really have chemistry. You know, she, he even said, why are you with him if you don't even like him? I thought that was pretty funny that he said, you know, you guys don't even have the best of chemistry. Um... But I like these two to get, I like these two. I think they just need to gel more. That's just my thing. They're just not gelling as lovers. I see them more as friends than I do as lovers. I get that that's the point, but, you know, if they're supposed to be together, we should see them that way. And I do feel like we're going to see more of that in Legends of Tomorrow. I'm definitely excited for that. Uh, that definitely is going to be interesting to see what happens in terms of that. Um... What else is going to happen here with Vandal Savage, though? We don't know what's going to happen there. Definitely is going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Are we going to see more Vandal Savage on Arrow? I mean, I think we have to. I mean, obviously Malcolm knows him. What's the connection he has? We don't really know. Uh, that definitely is going to be very interesting to see what happens with that. But overall, guys, I really did love this two-part. I thought it was miles better than last year. Miles better, honestly. Even though I didn't think this episode was as strong, I still, like I said, count as one big episode. I don't know what you guys saw this episode. Which part did you like better? I definitely like part one as an episode better, but I did feel this was a very good conclusion, and I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for um, the Wiz Live, which I can't wait for, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.